be seated. Man. Praise the Lord. Would you bow with me in prayer as we invite God's blessing and anointing upon this service tonight? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good day you've given to us today. The blessed privilege on this Palm Sunday to be able to gather again this evening and worship the Lord. We pray that you will be glorified. We pray that you will anoint the ministry of the, the ensemble and every aspect of the ministry tonight from God's Bible School, that you will quicken each one to be able to be at their best for the honor and glory of God, and then that you'll quicken each of us who are privileged to take in the service tonight, whether here present in the service or watching by live stream, we pray that, that you will work among us and you will minister uh, to us and through the ministry of the symphonic wind and string ensemble tonight. Just have your unhindered way. May your presence be felt in a special way and your name be glorified and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Sankey's coming to share it this time. Well, good evening. It is a real joy for us to be back in Lebanon at the God's Missionary Church. It's always a high point for us to come here, and you all treat us so, it's almost like you like us a little bit, and we appreciate that so much. We've been treated so well and so warmly. The food has been great. The fellowship, uh, everything has just been made so comfortable and convenient for us, and I just want to say thank you right at the outset for uh, being such a welcoming congregation, and for showing up tonight. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your presence here tonight. And I can tell you this, we didn't drive all this way to uh, put on a performance or a show, but we did come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe that's why you came as well. I believe you want to worship the Lord, and that's really our desire. Uh, we're going to talk to you about the school in a little bit. You know the drill. We're going to uh, tell you about the needs and, and tell you about the opportunities and, and all of that. But I think I can say this from President Loper uh, on down tonight, that we really want more than anything else for the Holy Spirit to be here and for Jesus to be lifted up. And if that's all that happens tonight, we'll leave here satisfied. We want there to be a spiritual interaction that takes place in our hearts with the Lord. And so you can help that to happen, I believe, by joining right in in worship, raising a hand, saying praise the Lord, shouting amen if you want. That won't bother us at all. But we do want you to lift up the name of the Lord with us. Mr. David Hartkopf is coming right now to lead the GBS Symphonic Wind and String Ensemble. Let's worship the Lord. Oh, 
sorrows as royal robes and fashioned our victory by dying alone. Who gave himself to make all things new? Oh God, it's you. It's you. within me bless his holy name bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thy iniquities who healeth all thy diseases who redeemeth thy life from destruction and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies he satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles the chapter Psalm 103 goes on to say bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion bless the Lord O my soul we are here tonight to lift up the name of Jesus in this place, and we pray that through these familiar hymns and gospel songs, maybe a few new songs as well, your heart would be lifted in praise to the one person who deserves it. Let's praise his name together tonight. Hallelujah.
Praise God. I'm thankful tonight that we serve a worthy God. And we can give everything we have to worship Him by our instruments and our voices. And even in our daily lives, we can live by worship. We can live by worshiping. And we should do that. And sometimes I feel like I'm not doing that. You know, in every, everyday life, I feel like I'm too selfish. I need to really give everything to God. And I think, and God deserves it. So I want to give my life to Christ and in every day surrender to Him.
so good to be home this evening. Um, the, my favorite verse of the next song that we're going to play for you says, My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. And I'm so thankful this evening that Jesus died for me, and that my sins, he saved me from my sins, and that I can say that it is well with my soul.
next song we're going to sing is Jesus, What a Savior. Uh, the chorus of that song says this, Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah, what a friend. He saves me, helps me, keeps me, and loves me. He is with me to the end. I'm so thankful tonight that I have a Savior that saved me, helps me, keeps me, and loves me. And he will never fail me and will keep me to the end. <clears throat>
Our next song is Never Forsaken, and this song reminds me of a passage in Deuteronomy 31, 7 through 8. It says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with his people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And I'm grateful tonight that we serve a God who won't forsake us when we face the seemingly impossible and um, scary task in life. Amen. Do any of you like Southern gospel music? Okay. Um, this one's for you. Uh, I'd like to dedicate this one to my good friend Mike DiStefano who's here tonight. And... Um, we don't do anything halfway, so this is a southern gospel song. I'm just letting you know, okay? Okay. <laughs> forsaken me. He's never going to. Amen. He's been faithful to me in my life. He's been faithful to me this far. And his word says he's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. This next song. Woo. I'm kind of still catching my breath in that song. Woo. Okay, I'm back. Um, this next song talks about 
how faithful God is. Um, the second verse talks about um, when my heart looked away and uh, when I could, whenever I didn't have faith, basically, God was still faithful to me. And that uh, he basically he can't help but be faithful to me. I'm so thankful that God's been faithful to me now. And he's always going to be. He's going to help me make it to heaven.
thankful for the faithfulness of God tonight, how faithful he's been to each of us. The word of God says, even when we're faithless, he cannot deny himself. He remains faithful. That's the God that we serve. Thank you, orchestra and ensemble and vocal ensemble for singing for us tonight and reminding us of the faithfulness of our God. The only reason you're here tonight, the only reason I'm here tonight is because of the faithfulness of of an almighty God. I give him glory tonight. Amen. These kids that are singing and playing behind me and have been for the past 25 minutes or so, they're the real deal. They come to God's Bible school because they want to know God's will for their life. They're serious enough about their spiritual life. They're serious enough about following God that they've come to Bible college. And I can tell you, I know these young people, that they have, some of them have some real testimonies of trials and storms and problems, things that they have faced at an early age. And here they are in Bible college with their faith in God and their eyes lifted upward saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? And uh, I don't know about you, but I look around at our dark world and I can get discouraged pretty quickly, but then I... I listen to what I've heard tonight, and I look at these young people and think, you know what, there's hope. God still has a people. There's still a generation, and I believe God is raising up a new generation that's going to come on the scene. They're already here and, and do for the kingdom of God uh, great things. God's uh, people uh, are scattered all over the world, and there are none greater, I don't think, than right here in central Pennsylvania. I've been out here several times, and I look at you folks here, and I thank God for the example that you have been and the testimony that you have. And I think that uh, the reason why some of you send your children, your young people, to God's Bible school is because it's a safe place. You can send your, your young people to secular university, and it may be all right, uh, for for them to go there, but I can promise you that in a secular university, they're going to teach them values that are diametrically opposed to the way you raise them. But if you send your young people to God's Bible school, it's a safe place. We still believe in the Bible. We still believe in the authority of Scripture, and we're going to base our higher uh, academic learning on Scripture. We still believe that salvation means transformation. We still believe that God can cleanse the heart from sin and purify and entirely sanctify us. And we still believe in the biblical standards of separation from the world. When your young people come to God's Bible school, it's going to be a safe place. Because it is there that they will find a biblical basis for what they're learning and for their education. It's a, it's a safe place. Our professors are degreed. They're highly qualified. They... They uh, have the letters behind their name to do what they feel like God has called them to do in an institution of higher learning. But you might as easily find one of our professors uh, mentoring one of their students, praying with them, dis discipling them, and helping them in their relationship with the Lord. Just as easily as you'll find them in the classroom teaching, they care about their students and they care about your young people. It's a safe place. But God's Bible school is also a sacred place. I wonder how many alumni we have here tonight. Would you wave at me if you're a, an alumnus or an alumni of God's Bible school? Let me see. All right. All over. Uh, each, one of these, each one of these young people or each one of these alumni, I should say, they're not so young, some of them anymore. I won't point any fingers. But um, each one of them can take you to a sacred place on that campus. I can take you to a spot in the altar in the front of that chapel where I, I knelt and God changed my heart forever. I'll never forget it. That's a sacred place. I can take you to room 123 of the God's Bible School dorm. It's not there just like it was 30 years ago, but I can take you to the general spot where God did something for me. It's a sacred place. And each one of these alumni can do the same, take you to a prayer room or a classroom or maybe a professor's office where they did business with God and their lives were forever changed. It's a sacred place. I still have people who come to me and say, when I walk on the campus, I, I just sense, I sense the presence of the Lord. And listen to me tonight. We don't take that for granted and we don't take that lightly. We thank God that over 118 years, it has been his will to bless 
the school there in Cincinnati. And uh, we humbly receive that blessing and thank Him for it. It's a sacred place, but it's more than anything else, God's Bible school is a sending place. For 118 years, God's Bible school has been, the mission of God's Bible school has been to send young men and women out, to train them and send them out to be lights in a dark world. Our new president, uh, Rodney Loper, who is here tonight, has said on more than one occasion, I want to see our young people graduate from God's Bible school and go out immediately to fill pulpits and to serve on mission fields and to go into ministry where there are Uh, You know, I don't have to tell you, there are many churches and many Christian schools and many mission fields that desperately need ministers, and so we want to send them out. And that's what God's Bible School has been doing since 1900. I can tell you about some of those stories. Charles and Letty Kalman come to mind. They uh, came to God's Bible School, and in 1901, Charles Kalman stood on a little piece of Uh, land right next to the administration building there on the campus, and he felt God's call to the island nation of Japan. And in 1901, Charles and Letty Kalman heard that call, and then they went to Japan. And before their ministry was over, they had reached over 60 million Japanese with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But uh, Lillian Thrasher, later on in the first part of the 20th century, went to, uh, from God's Bible School to Egypt, and she opened an orphanage, and thousands of orphans were, uh, were fed and clothed and told the gospel message. Uh, the uh, GIs of the cross, who are a part, an integral part of the GBS history, would uh, drive off of the campus there in Mount Auburn and in funny looking Jeeps and vehicles and trucks with placards that that uh, said Jesus saves and people made fun of them. But uh, as uh, someone has said, uh, he, I like a whole lot more what they did than what we're not doing. And they went out with an unmatched evangelistic fervor to win the lost. That's the history of God's Bible school. But I don't have to leave you in the 30s and 40s and 50s of the last century, but I can bring you right up into the present. God's Bible School is still sending out young people. Brennan and Yvonne Muir are in Mexico tonight, having graduated in 2015, feeling the call of God to be missionaries on a foreign field. And they have left comfort and they have left family and friends, and there they are. In uh, Toronto, Canada, Ezra Beyer, who graduated just a short time ago, is there planning a church. Dwight Crosley is in Port Clinton, Ohio, and he's preaching and pastoring at a church there. Marika came to us from South Africa a few years ago. She graduated from our undergrad program and then graduated from our master's program just last year. And tonight she's in the Philippines as a missionary. What is, what is the story of God's Bible School? It is of that school sending out young men and women to be light in a dark world. And uh, President Loper has said uh, again and again in this first year, we want that to be what we're about. We want to send people out. And maybe there's a young person here tonight who says, uh, you know, Mark, I, I love God with all of my heart. I'm surrendered to him. My all is on the altar. I don't sense that God is calling me to be a preacher or a pastor uh, in a church somewhere, but I believe God is asking me to use the gifts and the abilities that he's given to me uh, to serve him in some other field, maybe in the field of medicine or uh, in architecture or engineering or whatever the case may be. Uh, Does God's Bible school have a place for me? It does. In fact, there are young people even here tonight who are coming to God's Bible school They feel like God has something for them, perhaps, in the field of medicine, but they want to come to God's Bible school and take some Bible and theology courses. They want to take some general ed courses from a Christian perspective. And while they're doing that, because God's Bible school is a part of a consortium of colleges there in Cincinnati, they can also go to UC or Xavier University or one of those colleges there and begin their own degree process by taking classes from those universities at no extra cost, at God's Bible school's cost, and they can get the spiritual establishment and the theology and Bible and so on 
And then from there, after they spent a year or so, however much God feels God has laid on them to spend there at the school, then go on to complete their degree. So it's very possible because God's Bible school has been recently uh, rated the most affordable nationally and, accred- and regionally accredited Bible college in America. And so for that reason, we can offer young people who perhaps don't sense a call to full-time uh, Christian ministry in the classic sense as we know it, they can still come and receive uh, quality education. And so that's why we're there. We're there to train our young people. And you know, there's a girl that I'm thinking of right now, a student who came to God's Bible school with that focus. She said, I'm going to spend a year and then go on. And then after the first year was over, she said, you know what, I think I need to spend another year here. And now she's completing a four-year uh, degree in one of the uh, ministry degrees we have at God's Bible. Who knows? what God will do for you and through you and with you if you give yourself to a Bible college for a year. God can do some amazing things in the amount of time that you give him there at a Bible college. And so the only way that can happen, as you know, is through people just like you who will give to see that the doors stay open and not only that we survive, but that we thrive in this first part of the 21st century. It's a $4.5 million a year annual budget. That's $12,000 a day to run God's Bible school. And 40% of that budget is raised. That means we come to you, people just like you all over the United States, and ask you for nearly $2 million a year to fund the school. That means you are an integral part, a vital part of what's happening on the hilltop at God's Bible school. We have uh, no donors that monthly write out checks for $100,000 or anything like that. But what we do have are people who sacrificially and faithfully send in month after month what they can, what they feel like God's laid on their heart. You know what the average monthly gift is to God's Bible school? $35. And what that tells me is that there's a lot of people who believe in what's happening there and they're giving. And that's what I'm inviting you to do tonight. Some of you already are doing that. Maybe there's some of you who are not yet doing that, and I could talk to you for a minute maybe about this faith commitment envelope that the young men have just handed out to you. It's a 12-month donor program, and you can fill out your information on this faith commitment envelope and then check one of the boxes, $10 a month, $50 a month, whatever you feel like the Lord would have you to do. And for the next 12 months, by filling out this card and putting it in the offering plate tonight, you're saying, by God's grace, as God supplies the need, I will give for the next 12 months. And then there's the 1810 Sustaining Donor Card as well. This is a newer donor program, and you can fill out your information as well. It's a little different from the 12-month program in that this 1810 Sustaining Donor Program is, is open-ended. You can give uh, just for as long as you feel like you're able to. Some have decided, you know, I want to give for just as long as I can. And if I can give for 20 years for a month, uh, each month, I want to do that. There might be someone here who says, I can only give, I don't know if I could give for six months or eight months, but I want to try. And so sign up and be a part of this. And the point in your life when you feel like you can't give anymore on a monthly basis, you can call or write in and just say, I can no longer give. But we want you to be a part of this uh, this 1810 Sustaining Donor Program. We have around 250 1810 Sustaining Donors. President Loper has said that if we get to 1,000 1810 Sustaining Donors, that he'll quit taking offerings in the middle of band services and choir services. And so I'd, I've never seen that before. I've never seen us not take an offering. I kind of like to see that. Uh, I'm not sure, I, you know, I don't want to keep it that way, but that's what he says. And so maybe there's someone here who would say, you know, I believe God is laying it on my heart. I want to support the school. I want to partner with you. You can do that by filling out that 1810 uh, sustaining donor card. And then there might be someone here tonight who would like to help the school in a more significant way. Uh, we have significant uh, challenges at the school. For instance, the big bus that we drove in up in here this afternoon has over a million miles on it. And we've uh, traveled 15 or 16 years in that bus. And Old Faithful has chugged along and kept us on the road. But uh, there have been a couple times, two or three times, when it's uh, left us on the side of the road. It's getting up in years, and we're starting to look for another bus. Maybe there's someone here who would like to know some more information about a project like that. Please come and talk to President Loper or myself after the service, and we'd love to fill you in on some of those details. And then there is... 
The one final envelope that I want you to look at, that's the revivalist envelope. How many of you, by show of hands, received the God's revivalist into your home? Could I see your hands? All right. Wow. Good many of you do. But there's uh, several of you who, who haven't uh, received this into your home or don't now. I'd like to offer you a, a special uh, deal, so to speak. And that is if you'll fill out this revivalist envelope for those of you who do not receive it. If you'd fill this out, put your contact information on the revivalist envelope. We'll send that into your home for the next year free of charge. It's full of great holiness material this year, a special uh, a series on holiness, the deeper life, sanctification, some wonderful articles and teaching in there, as well as great up-to-date information about the school. So please fill out the revivalist envelope if you don't receive it, and we'll send it to you for the next year free. Thank you so much for allowing us to come and be uh, here with you tonight. It's always a privilege for us to come here. And thank you also for the many, many, many times that you folks have responded to us financially. And we, we just want to say thank you. It seems uh, so insignificant just to say the words, but know that from our hearts, we, we feel your support, your prayers, your giving, and it means so very much. We're going to ask the ushers to come right now and receive the offering. And I'm going to ask you to prayerfully consider what God would have for you to give tonight. So as the ushers are preparing to come, let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we pray now that you would take this next part of the service, this offering, that you would use it for the glory and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Put it on our hearts, Lord, the figure, the number that you want us to give. And may our hearts find a new and a fresh passion to be a part to partner with you and your kingdom's work in Cincinnati. Thank you again for these people and for what they've given in the past and for their commitment even tonight. We'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen.
Thank you, Michael. He arranged that for us for free. So thank you. That's a special piece, uh, as uh, Mr. Harkoff just uh, uh, alluded to. Thank you again, Brother Michael, for that. And thank you also for, again, allowing us to be here. Uh, Pastor Walter, we appreciate the invitation, the open door. Uh, it's uh, just our privilege. We don't take it for granted that we're here, and so thank you for allowing us to come back again. And thank you for your giving as well. I do need to, before the orchestra comes back f to uh, play a few more songs, I do need to take a moment and thank some people who you may not see, or some of them you may not see up front, and they're just an integral part of the tour. And one of those is our sound man, Mr. Dustin Muir. Dustin does a great job. He's back here. Uh, a lot of times the only attention the sound man gets is when something goes wrong. But um, Brother Muir does a fantastic job. Thank you, Dustin. And also does a great job uh, for us driving the van. Would you help me thank him for uh, doing such a great job? Thank you. And then Mr. Eli Albring, right back here in the bow tie. He's the uh, logistics coordinator for the tour, does so many things, and uh, is such a blessing to me to have on the tour and works very hard. Thank you, Eli, as well. Thank you so much. And then uh, I don't need, he needs no introduction here of all places, but Mr. Andy Cooley's our bus driver. Thank you, Mr. Cooley, for doing a great job. He gets us where we're going. He gets us there safe. He gets us there on time. Sometimes I have problems keeping up when I'm driving behind him, but he, he gets us there. I'm telling you, he does a great job. And uh, then I, don't, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to Miss Jessica Smith, who does just a fantastic job on the piano and on the keyboard. She is just uh, top of the line when it comes to her keyboard artistry. Would you help me thank her for all that she does? She's on our music faculty. Thank you. So let's continue to worship the Lord as Mr. Harkoff comes back.
turn this thing on. Uh, I just want to thank God for uh, giving me what I don't deserve. I keep thinking back to uh, one of the songs that we played in the prelude, uh, Amazing Love, How Can It Be? That you, my king, would die for me. <sighs> and uh, there's nothing I can do to repay that kind of love. I just want to thank him. Eight thirty four. who is he that condemns? It is Christ that has died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Jesus' blood speaks for us this evening, and uh, I'm just blessed to be in his presence tonight, and I say glory to his name. We've come to lift him up. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord.
When my accuser makes the claim that I should die for my offense, I point him to that rugged frame where I found life at Christ's expense. See from his head to his feet beside a fountain flowing deep and wide. Oh, hear it shout the victory, the blood of Jesus speaks for me. Worthy is the Lamb, Lamb for sinners slain, Jesus Lord of all, glory to His name. Heaven crying out, let the earth proclaim power in the blood. Glory to His name, worthy is the Lamb, Lamb for sinners slain, Jesus Lord of all, glory to His name. Heaven crying out, let the earth proclaim, power in the blood, glory to His name, Jesus. Oh, let my soul arise. Jesus, peace for me. Amazing love, how can it be? The blood of Jesus, peace for me. of Jesus tonight that speaks for me and um, this next song is my favorite song that we've sang all year from the first time I've heard it until now um, it's called the cause of Christ and um, the words are so powerful and so I I was kind of curious as to um, what made the author pin these words and so today I looked it up and um, um, there was an interview and I wrote down a quote from the lady that wrote this song and she said we may go through things in life and we may not ever understand the why of certain experiences and pain, but I want Jesus more than I ever want to understand the why. And from that, she wrote these words. For this cause, I'll live. For this cause, I'll die. I surrender all. I give you my everything for the cause of Christ. And I'm so thankful today that um, we have a Father in heaven that we can give our hearts to and our lives for. But Something that's been sticking out to me all day, um, the verse came to my mind. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are so few. And I don't, don't want to be the cause of the few. I don't want to be that one person that just comes to church and sits in the pew and um, doesn't do anything for the cause of Christ. I want to go out into his field, and I want to minister for him. And the last, wor the last verse of this song is my favorite. It says, It is not fame that I desire or stature in my brother's eye. I pray it said about my life that I live more to build his name than mine. And that's truly my testimony tonight. And if you don't know him and you can't say that that's your cause for living, you can know him tonight. And I'm thankful for that. The only thing I want in life is to be known for loving Christ, to build His church, to love His bride, 
and make his name known far and wide for this cause I desire 
nor stature in my brother's eye. I pray it said about my life that I lived more to build your name than Jesus just finished talking to the Samaritan woman. The disciples come back, and they miss it. And they're wondering if he's hungry. And he says this statement to them. He says, my food is to do the will of him that sent me. In other words, what gets me up in the morning, what wakes me up, is doing God's work in the world. And um, it's such a privilege to be involved in the cause of Christ. Um, a couple months ago... Uh, I started pastoring a church on the weekends um, because I didn't have much going on at school. Um, <laughs> and uh, first Sunday I got there and I was uh, really excited because there were people there. Uh, I didn't know who they were and they were all smoking in the parking lot, which was awesome. So I was like, oh, we have people to talk to. This is great. And uh, I found out he was like my head usher and all this stuff. It was crazy, okay? And I get in this situation... Um, where these new families start coming in, God sends them in, and um, I'm like a rookie pastor, okay? Uh, and you preachers, probably none of you grade A preachers know, but if you, you know like when you kind of like blow it on a Sunday morning, you have to kind of pick yourself up the rest of the week. I don't know if you've ever been there. I'm sure you've never been there, Brother Walter, but I was there. I finished the sermon, and I was like, that was awful. And um, I close my Bible, everyone starts talking, and this lady... Um, walks out of the pew and starts walking toward me, bawling. Uh, and I was like, I didn't think it was that bad. Um, <laughs> but she's bawling, okay? And there's no culture in this church of, like, um, praying at the altar, all, all the things that we've been so blessed to have. And she just comes up to me, and she looks at me, and she says, Pastor Dave, I need to repent of my sins. And, um, which is kind of cool, but I didn't give an altar call, so what do you do, right? So I'm just like, we just grabbed a bunch of people, we gathered around her, uh, I don't even know if they've ever done this before, but we prayed, and this lady, uh, right in the middle of the church, at the end of the service, when you're not supposed to, passed from death to life. Um, because the cool thing is, it's not about the messenger. It's not about, uh, it's not like I don't prepare my sermons, but it's not about the messenger. It's the message we have to give to people, a message of hope, the message of Jesus, transformation. God can do more with sin in your life than just forgive, forgive, forgive. He can break its power. She just testified. I uh, baptized this lady a couple weeks ago. She got up and testified in church. It was kind of funny. We're quite informal there uh, at this little country church. And she said, I want to thank God I haven't had a cigarette in two weeks and my husband is still alive. That's exactly what she said. Um, <laughs> But God is working. There's a Holy Spirit. I didn't talk to her about any of that stuff. God was up for the job. And uh, if we could just leave you with one thing tonight. Uh, it just makes sense in light of everything that Jesus has done to give yourself back to him as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, living, is where it's at. Uh, I can't imagine a better life than doing exactly what God uh, wants me to do. And uh, we sing this song. This, this kind of became a tradition at the end of our services by accident. One of our students arranged it for us. But it's just a reminder that life is short. It's a vapor. It's a mist, James 4 says. And I want to make my life count uh, for Jesus. And uh, as we close, I pray that this is your prayer tonight. And thank you for having us, for worshiping with us. Thank you, Brother Walter. We'll turn it over to you after the students are done singing. Praise the Lord. All want their lives to count for something, to leave their mark when life is through. But vain pursuits will count for nothing, time will erase whatever do
inside my heart there burned a question what was I placed on earth here for oh it truly was to build a kingdom not of my own but of the Lord What a beautiful, beautiful prayer for us to have, and maybe more than words, but something that's truly from our heart. We would have a life that counts for Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's been so good to have you all here, and this wonderful group back here. It's great to have them here. I want, you, you've got to be feeling like I need to stand, and uh, so why don't we do that? Just stand for a moment. I'm going to relocate, and we're going to take care of some important business here before everyone leaves. So just give me a moment. Brother Eli, where are you? Let's go over here in this corner. <laughs> 